first lesson on crowd testing. Welcome to the first lesson dedicated to testing. In this first module, we will deal with introducing the concept of crowd testing. In this slide, you can see how the resolution of an operating anomaly has a cost up to a hundred times higher than the resolution of the same anomaly detected during testing. This is because in addition to the technical costs of resolution, the costs related to image damage and its lost earnings must be added. In recent years, due to the exponential growth of mobile applications, the priority of mobile testing has increased significantly. Companies that put new applications on the market have had to face new problems related to the absence of appropriate mobile testing processes. The difficulty in testing one's own applications on all the devices on the market and the difficulty of replicating the laboratory to the real environment. Just think of all the combinations of 3G, 4G and LTE networks that should be tested and the lack of time. In order to perform mobile testing, the solution to all these problems is crowd testing. Crowd testing, therefore, consists in delegating part of the test activities to an external community, that is, the crowd. This community will have to operate autonomously on the basis of predefined objectives and according to the models that have established themselves in the social networks of sharing, collaboration and participation. But what are the advantages of the crowd? First of all, it acts in the real world, that is, in the context where the application will be used. In this way, the widest distribution in terms of technology can be guaranteed with all possible combinations of operating system, device and geographical and demographic operator, involving users of every age of every culture and profession. In addition, the crowd acts continuously and impartially and ultimately reduces the costs of the test as it provides immediate feedback, operates with its own device and is remunerated based on results. In this slide, we will see the comparison between the laboratory testing process and crowd testing process. As far as the laboratory testing process is concerned, there are generally four planning phases in which the best strategies and methodologies are developed to perform the analysis and design test in which the analysis of the documentation is performed and the test lists are created. Implementation and execution in which the previously designed test cases, reporting and closure of the test are performed. In this phase, the anomalies are managed by checking the possible fixes and the end of service report is drawn up. Instead, the crowd testing process involves five phases. 1. Preparation which identifies the objectives to be followed by the campaign in agreement with the client. 2. Starting, i.e. the recruiting phase, where the criteria to be met to participate in the campaign are established, followed by the selection of the most suitable testers. 3. Execution and operational phase, in which testers open the reports and reply to the questionnaires. 4. Validation, in which the reports are verified by the managers, which assigns a severity and a type to each of them. 5. Finally, there is the closure. In this fifth phase, the results are collected and proceed with the tester's rating. Remember that the crowd testing process does not replace that of the laboratory, but supports it. In this slide, the main phases of a crowd testing session are summarized. The first one is to collect the specifics of the campaign from the client and to define the focus that the crowd testers will have to study in depth. In this phase, it will also be decided what type of campaign is more suitable to the objective of the test. We can have three different typologies. The bug mission for the identification of functional anomalies the experience mission to evaluate the user experience and the end-to-end -end mission that defines the user experience in a real activation process. The second phase is the executive phase of the campaign 
and includes the recruiting operations, that is, the collection of accessions, the staffing, then the selection of users, and the executive, i.e., the actual execution of the campaign. The third and last phase is the closing one, where crowds are remunerated according to the activities carried out. At the end of the campaign, the rating of each crowd tester is updated. The rating is a value that indicates the quality of the activity carried out by the crowd tester and is given by the ratio between the signals accepted compared to those rejected. This value is generally equal to 43% for a standard crowd tester, while it rises to 70% for a professional crowd. That is, a crowd tester of a more advanced level who will have access to campaigns where the highest level of preparation is required.